the company podcast. Oh, are we recording? Yeah. Uh, how long have we been recording? Four minutes. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm gonna chop it all though. We can start like whenever. So. All right. Podcast. <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Guys, it happened again. Yeah. I woke up this morning, and I felt great. I've never felt this good in my life. I actually woke up today and, and like I actually felt great because I stayed on the sidelines last night. I did it not. paid off. I went to Hoboken after drinking all day in Montclair State for the my college's homecoming. And now I feel terrific. Uh, I was up till three in the morning watching uh, Netflix with my buddy Merjum. And I continued to drink. You ever come home after a night of drinking and then you're like, well, I'm fucked up. The next natural step is to go open another drink. Yeah, like crack open like a nice beer, white claw type thing. Yeah, this never works out. I woke up this morning and like then you see that same can that you half finished, and just the thought of the liquid in that can makes me violently like ill. I just got you know how SB's account is hacked. Yeah. I just got it. It's like, hey, I was wondering if you heard about the DHS program going on now. Did you see that, like, Ryan O'Toole put up, like, a post that was like, hey, she got hacked, like, no yeah. one respond. Yeah. And then the person responded to that fucking story. <laughs> like, have you heard about the DHS yeah. program? <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ. Yeah. Yeah, man. Fucking, I did the opposite. I was, I had to work yesterday. I was working a bar mitzvah. So I was uh, getting down with my with my Jewish people yesterday. It was a fun time, and then you were asking me to go out, but I just I couldn't I couldn't give in, I couldn't let the devil win this week. Yeah, and I'm glad I didn't. Uh, I, yeah. I needed it. I slept like eleven and a half hours. Listen, I I love to party. Yeah, what could I fucking love to party. I huge, man. made a huge mistake. Oh shit! Yeah, dude. I well, hey, my body. What a time! What a time to tell the people as we're live from the couch, folks. We got some big news here at the Good Crack Podcast. It's we're, crazy. It's so crazy. Really, it's really an honor to announce to all of you that Matt and I are joining the Manscaped family. We are actually a part of actually, the Manscaped family. We're going to actually... You know how starting, we have all those other ads? Yeah. Well, guys, I don't mean to burst the bubble, and I'm not going to, but no, let's just no. say like those ads come from the, the, the etherverse. Those yeah, are, yeah. Those we, aren't necessary. We created that. We created We're them. the writers. We're the writers. But Manscaped. Yeah. Now that's a real company. Yeah. They have and, a real product. And starting next week, we're going to be doing some real ads. Real official ads yeah. for Manscaped. I don't know how the fuck this happened. Joey called me this week and said they reached out to us because they found yep. the podcast. I was like, well, that's just not true. Like, we've been doing this for like two months. How did they, you know? But, but it's real, folks. They reached real. out. They said, we love what you're doing. We love to get involved with you, and we're getting into bed with them. We are getting into bed with Manscaped. And we're going to save some balls, to we're say We're going to save some balls, and we're going to be hairless, and i got a lot of hair to spare. Yeah, so, you know, I guess I guess the best way to tie that up is um, thank you to you guys. Yeah. You, got, you guys didn't do this, just so you know. Like, Not you guys, you did this. Yeah, you're all useless, but you do listen you do share, you do post, you comment, like, and subscribe. And you got to keep doing that, guys. Yeah. Subscribe to the podcast on Apple yeah. Podcasts and Spotify. Follow us on yeah. Instagram. Yeah. It's good for the team, you know? Yeah. You know what the hell, you know how they say, like, you don't have an STD until you get tested? Yeah. It's like the same thing with this. Like, just spread it. Yeah. Don't, th- don't think about it. Just spread it. Spread yeah. the podcast. Spread the, the love and joy of good crack. He's absolutely right, folks. Because it, it's going to do great things for all of us. Not, yeah, just, and listen, not just the two of us, but all of you guys, too. Joey and I, as we've told you from the beginning, we're smart people. We're smarter than you. We're smarter than your mom and your dad. We're smarter than everyone you know. Your entire family tree. We're funnier than them. We're just better people than you, and that's why we have a podcast and you listen to us. Yeah. But all that being said, Joey and I did not you know, start this journey. Just to back up a tiny bit. So Joey I and I twist the knobs. Did not <laughs> start this journey to you know get sponsors and make money and blah blah blah. No, nah. we're just here spreading the crack. Just yeah, giving you guys the good crack. It almost feels as if because we approached it in that sense, that's why we're being rewarded. Like we we got into this and we're like, 
Like, we were not expecting anything, any type of sponsorships, monetization, whatever. We're just like, dude, let's just fucking have a good time every week, talk some comedy, you know, have some laughs. But and you know what? It's that work- attitude got us. Yeah, it's yes. working out, and in a very quick amount of time, quicker than I'd ever expected, we have a real partnership with a real company so we're super excited to start this journey with manscape so on an actual serious note thank you guys anyone who's showing support means a lot and uh yeah as the manscaped campaign starts we'll appreciate your support there as well yeah thank you thank you support Um, the show but to go back to the podcast yeah i i realized like we just were talking about how violently hungover i am and like how i feel like i'm gonna die Mm -hmm. i'm much better now yeah but like we didn't also explain that's why we're doing the podcast on a couch yeah that's why we're here guys yeah, like he's he's on the couch because he's just deathly ill. I'm on the couch because I'm so refreshed that I'm like, hey, let's keep this party going. You know what? I guess we didn't really document because it was a guest episode, which was a great episode last week. But technically, was last week the first ever episode where we weren't hungover? I mean, yes and no. I, I say no only because that Saturday, though we didn't go out at night, we did... We did the open mic at the pair in the city, and then we were drinking all day. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, <laughs> I here I didn't wake up Sunday feeling like like good. I woke up feeling good, as in like I, I definitely felt like hung a normal. Over. Yeah, no, hung uh, over. You felt hungover. Inside? No, like I'm saying, I didn't wake up feeling like great, and I don't mean the great that we like oh, to like use. I mean great. actual great. But all right, I think you're right there. Yeah, I mean, dude, we what we had a pitcher during the day before oh, wow. the mic. I mean, we both told. I, I getting yeah, up to that mic. Honestly, I felt yeah, half drunk. I feel like yeah, we didn't well, I eat. was fucking drunk when I got there. Um, I think that day just sucked the life out of us, and um, it was like it wasn't like a true and tried hungover. It yeah, was just like we were so tired that when the next day we had like residual tiredness. Yeah, yeah. But that, that was that a great counts. podcast. I was really excited to have Brett on as our first guest. Yeah, uh, I think he was hilarious. I think he's a great guy. I really liked having a guest. Yeah. And I'm sure you guys did too, because as we said, we're better than you. And uh, we're gonna continue <laughs> to bring on guests. He actually was he was featured in a, a Vox article a few days after the podcast. They were doing an article on like how our generation is investing in a lot of different asset classes, and they actually cited him and like Brett Coin, and they said like first publicly traded comedian, really cool. So he he's getting some nice traction with his thing. So glad that we could you know. Yeah, be a part of it and hang out. Yeah, and then I think could we announce who our next guest is going to be? Yeah, yeah, we could do that. Do we have him locked in for next he's Sunday? Lo- now? Yeah, he's locked in. He had he had like family stuff to do today. A lot of October birthdays in his family. So next uh, next Sunday we'll be having our second ever guest, and it's going to be none other than Johnny Drinks, John Rodney Jr. Yep, we're very excited yep. to have him. So old friend of ours. Yep. Successful not even con- old, not even old friend, just friend of ours. You know, yeah. I saw Johnny for some dinner Friday, so yeah. Well, what do you mean? Well, when you say like old friend of ours, sometimes I like think like, oh, it's like our old friend. No, like, I mean well, like like we've been we've friends been, with him right, for quite some that's time. That's true. That's true. What did you think I meant? Like the age? No, I thought you meant like I don't know, like like yeah, he's not fifty five, guys. No, no, age. no. I think of like old friend as in like yeah, like we used to hang out years ago, and like we don't like. See each other much now. He's just like an old friend. That's interesting. I don't that know. You, like, think of it that way. Yeah. Well, I maybe like I'm, any, maybe I'm an idiot. Though. I don't know. What do you, Birdo? We got a we got Birdo on the set today. What do you think of when you hear the, the phrase "old friend"? Do you think that means someone that's been friends with you for a long time, or someone that you used <laughs> to be friend with? I'm just that's an idiot. Insane, that's insane. Like, just someone that you thought like you used to be friends. Like I think of like people that I was like best friends with in elementary school but we don't hang out anymore it's like oh that's that's an old friend of mine you know I feel like that's incorrect but listen <laughs> who, who am I to judge about hey. how people use to hey us? hey at the end of the day we got Johnny drinks coming next yeah, week. Sorry. really exciting stuff yeah we're gonna be we've, making some cocktails with him we've gotten to see secondhand how he's just blown up over the last year and a half yeah it's really cool so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get um my cock and yeah. Then we're gonna get the tail of a of a cow. And we're gonna make cocktail we're gonna, sauce. We're gonna stab them together, and nail them together, and make cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna nail a tail to my cock. <laughs> Say that ten times fast. Nail a tail to my cock. So, dude, you went to homecoming yesterday, and like homecoming yeah. at college is such a funny thing because, like, I went to it at my old school, Mammoth, that I went to for a year. They have homecoming. Yeah. I mean, my old college, that's not even a college, has it too, but. 
Homecoming's funny because I uh, it's like when does it go out of style? You know, like at what like at what point in your life do you have to reevaluate yeah. the idea of you're gonna go Listen, to homecoming? Man, it was a fun weekend when we were in college, and it was fun yesterday. Truthfully, like I wouldn't have gone, but I think the only reason I did and why a lot of people did is because. We graduated 2020 and like, you know, with the pandemic and then we didn't get to have that, you know, usually your first year you go to the first homecoming and see all the old friends. Right. Mm -hmm. But in this case, I didn't get to say goodbye to a lot of like people from like frats and sororities I was friends with. A lot of us didn't see each other. So I think this homecoming was good because we missed last year's because of COVID, obviously. And it was the first time a lot of people had seen each other in quite some time. Yeah, that's cool. But, um. It was also fucking weird. It was like they put on a good thing and like, you know, we went to the, it was really just about going to this local bar we always used to hang out at and seeing a lot of people from Greek life that we used to know. But then we also like midway through the day, they're like, everyone's like, well, let's go to, let's go to campus and see the dance. And I'm like, uh, yeah, big mistake. are we going to actually do that? Yeah, I saw your Snapchats and I'm like, what a mistake. Yeah. So I don't know about how other homecomings work and what it is, but at Montclair's what happens is if you're in Greek life, every team or like... Every frat and sorority gets partnered up with each other, and you have to make a dance for some reason. You choreograph a dance, and then you perform it at homecoming. I don't know what the fucking the reason for that is, but it is what it is, and you do it. I did it. We all did it. Mm -hmm. Back then, though, it was kind of fun. My junior year, when we did it, life was normal, you know? Things were going fine. There was no pandemic. Everything was cool. Um, you know, we did it, and then you go out, and you get drunk after. But this year, I... It was so fucking strange, dude. So it's like it's the dumbest thing in general. But once you're you're in it, obviously you don't think about it like that. Mm -hmm. But it was so weird because when we did it, like you you know they make a music mix and then like you'd record voices over it and like you'd pretend to, like there'd be people on stage like miming the talking like, oh my god, we're on an adventure today at Montclair State. We are going to dance our ass off like. And it's like about a theme or whatever. It's always themed. Yeah. And yesterday the first fucking dance starts. And it's like these fucking, this frat and sorority. And the re or recording's like, we're here to, uh, I hope like the coronavirus doesn't ruin college again. And their whole thing was like corona themed. And I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on in the world, dude? Like, why would you do that? Like, wh who do you think that's like, that wants to hear that? Like right. their whole thing, cause like the theme was like heroes. So it was about superheroes uh -huh. and they were like trying to defeat COVID. Yeah. It was the strangest fucking thing I've ever seen in my life. I was like, yeah, I'm going to actually shoot my dick off. That's just not, that's thing. not what home comes for. Like they like to yeah. think it is, but it's not. I, I remember going to Monmouth was so much fun, especially after I transferred because for me, it was more of like I get to just go back and hang with everyone. You came with me the first yeah. year after I transferred. We had a really fucking wild day. And that, like, yeah, but that's – and I know that you said it's changed since then, but Montclair's homecoming is not at all like that because we you can't drink on campus and no one actually goes to the football game. Well, yeah. That's, but your thing was well, crazy. Yeah, and you're you not allowed to drink, drink on campus. It's just like it's that one day every year. Where they just like they just let it slide like nice. the whole you get you get like a real college tailgating experience. That shit was wild. That was a really yeah, fun day. That was fun, but it was always funny because I was so removed, right? Because I was like getting involved with Greek life, but then I transferred, so I kind of went back and like some friends were in it, some friends weren't. But what really cracked me up, which like goes back to what I the what I was asking in the beginning, was. You would get some of the funniest characters, like these dudes would be there that were like 31, and they're just like linking up with all the 22 year old dudes, and they're all just like, "What do we get into, bro? Where are the chicks? Like, what are we doing? Like, where are the broads at?" And it would just be like, "Buddy, you know, like when do you hang it up?" Because like, even if we went next year, it's like we'll be 25, 26. Yeah. It's like that's you know that's fair. That's fair. So and like, I felt third... even a little weird going yesterday. I'm yeah. like, man, like these kids are like in the prime of their life. I'm like an old fuck. We're like, there's just a big disconnection, man. Yeah. Like you, you get out of college and school, and you really get yeah, into the but world. But when you see like the 30 year old there, like what's fucking going on? Right. Yeah. Even like 28, 29. It's like, dude. I'm not going to a frat party after right. this. Like, what are you doing? Like, and, like, not to mention they might be making, like, 60 k a year at whatever job, so they also go there feeling like the richest man in the world. Like, at Mammoth, that was a thing. They would go there, bro. Yo, it's all on me, bro. Like, I got this. Like, they're, like, flexing, and it's like, well, they they make a median salary. It's just because we're <laughs> all in college that we're, we're like, bro. whoa. 
He just he just got that two hundred dollars. Like, so I didn't really have. I mean, listen, I, we had some old brothers pop back sometimes, but the thing with us is, um, my chapter of my fraternity only started on my campus like four or five years ago, so we yeah, don't have true. any like old bucks coming. That's true. Look at that. Isn't that nice to look at? You know what that is, Joe? What? That's just a three two one cigarette. Oh, I should know. I also have a three two one cigarette. Toasted, fresh, and clean. Let me tell you a story, folks. Yeah, let's hear it. People don't know this, but three two one cigarettes have been around for long, hundreds of years. Long time. I think they're like five, six hundred years old. Yeah. Yeah. Tobacco company, one of the best. Mm-hmm. People don't know this, and you do. Three two one actually had some involvement with the Revolutionary War. The revolution. Some, some involvement not that doesn't even do it justice. They were a pivotal part of the Revolutionary War. So three two one tobacco company yeah. had its roots in Connecticut. In, yeah. Well, originally England. Originally yeah. England. Yeah. Then who was the founder of 321? What was his name? John Stavenstein? No, no, John. No, John Servine. John Servine. Yeah, Servine. Servine. Yeah. He was a British man. Yeah. Owned tobacco fields in uh, London and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And then moved to Connecticut before they even found, before 1776. Like he was on one of the original, you know, colony type yeah, things. The, the boats. Boats. And um, he started this great tobacco company in Connecticut. He said, I'm going to give them 321 reasons why they should use mine over the other yeah, brands. Yeah, and this is at a time when, you know, tobacco was not clean. Like, you know, people were smoking pipes. And there also was an option. So you, yeah. you you had maybe three. And the thing is, on. you know, John was just making the cleanest toasted tobacco that was actually very healthy for you compared to the leading brands of the time, yeah. which were like two. And it right. was just old, old ship pipe tobacco. Mm-hmm. Um, and what he did is he made... So many three, two, one cigarettes for the the revolutionary boys, and he was their main tobacco supplier, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and it was good because previous to that, all the soldiers of the revolution were smoking other brands, and they were getting sick, and you know. Well, that's the best part is that you had people were dying of sickness, other ailments, and injuries, and they they were slowly figuring out. One of the medics was like, "Hey." This guy got shot in the arm, and we were, he was smoking three, two, one, and he's made a full recovery. Yeah, and it was really interesting because people didn't understand the healing qualities. Right. Now, of course, we right. know the science behind why three, two, one cigarettes are so much healthier than any other cigarette. You know, because well, of yeah, science. And his, and his descendants are, have been going after like big weed a lot because, as you know, like medical marijuana, all this showing like these medical properties and ailments you could use it for, but they've really pushed three, two, one out of the limelight. Yeah. But here's the crazy story getting back to the revolution. Yeah, sorry. I got so, three, two, one's making these great cigarettes. It's healing the soldiers, it's helping them. They yeah, love smoking. They're winning the war. Yeah, kids are smoking them to help out. The mo- Which they should. Betsy Ross smoking. Kids it. should smoke. If them. you read the history books, Betsy Ross was smoking a three two one when she came up with the idea for the American flag. Yeah. The guy who wrote the Star Spangled Banner, Francis three, two, Scott one. Keith, three two one. But here's the really fun part. John Servine only made the healthiest and the best cigarettes at that time, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But the Brits came. The Brits were a bunch of cats, right? And they're coming in, fucking everything up, and we're you got a revolt. We're revolting, right? Mm-hmm. But despite the fact that they were cocksuckers, they still loved three, two, one cigarettes. Right. You know, you couldn't turn one down. Right. So John, despite that he makes the healthiest cigarettes in the world, said, that, you know, George Washington came to him and said, John, listen, we're we're losing on the front here in Connecticut. We need some type of help. And John said, I will make one batch of unhealthy cigarettes. This is the one time I'll ever do this. Because I care so much about this country and about freedom, and you know, he put his morals on the line to and th- save our yeah. nation. And this is not an easy feat for John no. Servine. He loves no, he's making an, he's good, an honest healthy guy. cigarettes. Yeah, they call them Honest John. Honest John. That's where the name comes from. Honest John. Everyone knows that name. Yep. Um, that's from John Servine, and he he took uh, a a batch of five that uh, five hundred thousand cigarettes mm-hmm. and dipped them all in. I think it was rat poison. No, it wasn't rat poison. It was um, kerosene. No. Keep going. Sea moss. No. No. Poisons. Um. Arsenic. Arsenic. That's yeah, what it was. Shit, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm mossed up. Yeah, he's mossed out, and he he gave these as a gift to the British Army, and guess what? They smoked them, killed a bunch of them. We won the war. So, folks, you're gonna go to three two one cigarettes dot com slash crack. 
and you're going to use the code John Servine saved our country. Yeah. And that's going to get you. They're doing a special offer. They're doing 50% off. This is a big deal to them. This causes everything to their company because it's the reason why we have freedom and we're here today. Yeah. I mean, listen, it, it could be argued without 321 cigarettes. We might not have a country. We might not have a country. No. So that's three, two, two one reason, reason to, to smoke cigarettes. cigarettes. Thank you, folks. That's true. That's true. But I that's would sense. see other frats that have been around for twenty years have guys be like, "I used to fucking be here. Like, what's going on, dude?" Yeah, dude. Like, if I ever did that, I I want nothing to do with my fraternity in any sense anymore. Like, not yeah. that I have any bad blood with them. It's just yeah. like I did it in when I was in college. I don't give a fuck anymore. Right, right. They're a big national organization. They always reach out to me, and I'm like, "Fuck you guys. I'm not giving <laughs> you any money." This yeah. is a pyramid scheme. They're like trying to get you to come back for a super senior year. Dude, well, that was the thing is like when I'd have to, because when I was president, I'd have to go to like all these big like events mm-hmm. in like Atlantic City or yeah, Boston yeah. and like meet all these people from different chapters. And I won't name my frat, but we're a large, large national fraternity. I think it's like the second or the, maybe the largest fraternity in the world in terms of collegiate fraternities. Mm-hmm. So there'd be people from all over the country, all that, blah, blah, blah. And there's guys that are like, 40 years old 50 years old then like they work for the fraternity and that's like their full-time job yeah that 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 is nuts and i'm like what that's the nuts. fuck are you doing that's like equally as bad as the kids at like the ladder who are like you know art therapy majors or something stupid and like they stay at the college like they stay at our other college and oh, then yeah. they just work in the administration and like art therapy department and then it's just like you're just stuck in, in this never-ending yeah. loop, bubble, and box, however, whatever you want to call it. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah, they're it's just like they don't want to let go. Yeah, they don't want to let go, and also, like, you must just be, like, worthless. Like, you right. might not have a brain. No, so. that or mentally ill. No, definitely, I think mentally ill. Yeah. That's definitely the case. Because yeah. you go there, and it's like, I, some of them do have... they Go, they, go, go, like, go there. They, okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, they, you're good. They, you're good. they do have other jobs. They do have, like, other jobs, but, like, they also have to... Because, like, that's the thing. Is like, It's a big responsibility. Like, stuff like that is a big enough responsibility where it's almost like, how do you have another job? Let me job? explain to you how weird this is. Because it's like, there's people that actually work for the fraternity. Right. Like, have actual... Like, full-time posi- yeah, salary yeah, yeah. positions. But right. these guys are... Ambassadors? No. There's, <laughs> like... So, when you're on our in our fraternity, you know, there's, like, the five main positions. And that's called the EC, the Executive Council, right? And we have, like, a stupid fucking names for them. But it's, like, President, Vice President... Um, secretary, yeah, treasurer, like a, like any and other like branch of ceremonies, yeah. governing. So there's the supreme executive committee, which is the guys that lead the whole fraternity, but they're like 50 years old, and they like run everything and call the shots. And you have this 50 year old at a fucking conference hall in Atlantic City being like, "Listen, they said we couldn't do it, but I want to do 500 new chapters this year. I want," and everyone's like, "Yeah." And I'm like, what the fuck am I doing here? Yeah, that's you just... people are out of your fucking minds. You they they talk about how great it is, and it's like, listen, dude, let me get real with you. The philanthropy we do is great. All that shit's great. Why people join a fraternity is to party for the four years of college and, and get the fuck out of there and bang. Yeah, and I'm like, these people, I don't know. I just would I never like, get involved past the college. You I feel I mean? like shit. Like like what that guy is saying. I feel like stuff like that really only holds weight. If you're, like, a big uh, fraternity at, like, Penn State or, like, fucking, you know, UCLA. Yeah. Like, these schools where, like, the fraternity, like, networks, the alumni networks are, like, so legitimate where, like, kids literally... Yeah, and, dude, listen, that they is easily transi- I think of, like, people at Penn State. Everyone I know at Penn State has, like, transitioned to, like, the working world either through their fraternity... Or just like, you know, like anyone else, an internship they got. But most of the time, always alumni. Listen, that is true. Like, you can do that, but like... You're not going to get that in Monmouth. Yeah, exactly. You know? And like, yeah. I don't know. I just don't like the idea of like, you're a brother for life. Like, shut the fuck up. It's it's like, you're joining the cult. I've never... I barely put it on my resume. I was a president. It's like the footnote of my resume. And I don't even say that I was in a fraternity. I say like, through a collegiate organization, I did all this philanthropy, which I did. Right. But it's like, it's never going to help me. Like, I'm in the arts, kind of. I'm in, you know. Yeah, it might hinder you. If any, like, yeah, not exactly. That, not no, that it would I, in your I, case, I think it would like, hinder me. Yeah. But that's the thing is, like, I've never been on an interview. And I'm sure it does happen where you meet a guy that happened to be in the same fraternity as you. But, like, I feel like back in, like, the 80s, that was cool. But, like, I don't give a fuck. If yeah. I met a kid that was in the same frat as me now, I'd be like, 
sick. Cool. Dude. Like, cool. Yeah. Yeah, it, one little thing that connects you. All that means is that you were another jerk off that needed something to do on the weekends in yeah. college. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I don't know. Greek life is weird, dude. Did I ever tell you about when I when I was president and I had to go to this big meeting in Boston with every chapter, and I forget what it's called, but like, it's a meeting they do like twice a year that everyone has to go to, like the supreme, like your your executive uh-huh. committee. And it's also at this meeting they do like trials for people that are uh, chapters. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. I remember you like touched on that. So one time. I'm there, right? And there's everyone. Like I'm just there with my fucking friends from Jersey, right? And we all look like scumbags. We're, we have to wear suits, but our suits are all like ill fitting. Uh huh. And like I don't know why, but that weekend we're like, let's just smoke cigarettes all weekend. So we, we just kept calling them cowboy killers. Yeah. And just bought two packs of Marlboro Reds. And during the coffee breaks, everyone's like eating lunch and whatever. We're just out front on a smoke-free campus just ripping Darth like assholes. <laughs> and all these like fucking dapper southern kids are like, who the fuck are these guys? <laughs> like, and, it's and I'm just, just like, like, fuck you guys. The Jersey boys. Yeah, right? Everyone loved us, though, too. Was, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm no, you're again. good. You're good. So, yeah, it was hilarious. We were like in an Airbnb with like 10 other chapters. For, like There was a huge house from uh, the East Coast. Yeah. And at one point, I'm just fucked up in our bedroom, and I don't know why. But I was sitting on the bed like a guru, and every like f- fifty kids were just standing around me, listening to me rant about God knows what. <laughs> Stevie J, my buddy, was like, "Dude, you were literally like a cult leader. Like, I don't know why they were all so like, interested in hearing what you had to say." Did we both have that in us? Because it makes me think back to even like it makes you think back to in middle school when we did theater, when we did Greece. You remember like. No, it was Guys and Dolls because you were in sixth grade. Yeah. And do you remember at, like, the rap party? Like, I'll never forget it. It was just me and you sitting at a table, and we had, like, 15 kids sitting there just listening to us tell fake stories. Yeah. Like, we, we literally... Would, like, fake, like, noir stories and yeah, just Yeah, people shit. would call them the mafia stories. Yeah. They would, like, request that me and Joey do it. Yeah. It would, would, I don't even remember what we did. I don't remember them at all, but... I think it was just us. I just remember, like, that. Yeah, dude. People like to hear us speak. Yeah. That's why Hence we're getting why paid now. Podcast. You fucking idiot. <laughs> um, but I'm sorry. Let me continue the story. That was hilarious. Yeah. All these jerk offs. They're all like, oh, because it's literally like everyone was really into the Greek life thing. And yeah. then me and my dickhead friends were like, fuck this, dude. We don't even want to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, they, the level of seriousness. Yeah, was so just... that Supreme Executive Committee that I was telling you about, Council, mm-hmm. had to put like, they had to deal with all of the chapters that were on trial for whatever, whether they're on probation, they're about to get kicked off. Right. And they would, co- these chapters were coming to appeal for themselves. And like, I heard some of the dumbest shit. Like you would have a school like Ole Miss or something or Indiana and they would have like, the chapter from there would like have the biggest house 150 brothers, 300 brothers, and they're on trial because, like, they found, like, a kilo of coke at their house or something, (laughs) and then, like, they just talk their shit and they get out of it. Yeah. But then, like, I remember the chapter from Albany was, like, um, the guy that uh, was putting them on trial had, like, a really deep southern accent and was like, is it true that, I'm reading here, you guys had your pledges put donuts on their penises and had... Uh, girls from another sorority ate them off. Is that true? And I'm like, what the fuck <laughs> is going on, dude? And they're like taking this all super seriously. Those kids got kicked off, as they should have. But I'm sitting there in the back, like, you know, we're from Jersey guys. We're at Montclair State. Like, we don't do anything. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah, yeah. Like, we're like, listen, dude, you're not going to, there's no hazing going on. We're Jersey right. guys. I, I don't fucking haze people. I'm not right. a child. You get in, we drink on the weekends, that's it. Right. You meet girls. Well, it, it goes back to, like, the whole, like, weight it holds depending at what school you're at. Yeah, for it's sure. It's just, like, you're at Ole Miss. It's, like, you're gonna they're doing the most outrageous, craziest shit. Dude, and I hear stories when I talk to those guys. Yeah, I get it. They got the mansion. They, they, they pay, like, five. I think our dues were, like, a couple hundred a semester. Like, 5K. The 5K. Yeah. Because you have a mansion. You live in the mansion. They have... Most of them private time, chefs. They have she- yeah, they cook them every meal, yeah. which I get. That's kind of cool, but like, yeah. it's crazy too. I remember when I was living in London, I had a buddy in my program uh, named Pat, and he was like the president of a frat as at like Ole Miss or one of the big Southern schools or some shit like that. Mm-hmm. And he's like, "Yeah, dude, like I'm in charge of a 1.2 million dollar budget every year." And it's I'm crazy. like, "What? Crazy?" And he's like, "Yeah, dude, like we we literally have a budget to bring people. He like paid Post Malone." Like four years ago, eighty thousand dollars to come perform at their frat, and that's, that's the really type dope. of shit they do. I mean, hey, if like if anything, 
that will give you some good real world experience right there. Yeah. I like mean, actually speaking. Dude, you know? I mean like I was in charge of pretty stupid shit sometimes like that, but like never that much money, but mm-hmm. it's crazy. That kid could embezzle a million dollars, but they will fucking destroy No, no. Him. You, but you know what I would do if I, like, I wouldn't embezzle, but like everyone's like, dude, we need Post Malone. We need Post Malone. And I'm like, dude, we're going to have the new job as memorial concert at our frat house. And they'd be like, what dude? You know, yeah, I heard a few. I was wondering if you heard about DHS. Oh, uh, hey, a- SB, we're pulling for you over SB, here. We're big fans of your comedy. Sorry, yeah. you got hacked. Um, yeah, dude. <laughs> I, going back to what you were just saying, totally get that. But like, then they tell me stories like, "Yeah, man, like, we had to kill a chicken," and I'm like, "Why? Like, why did you have to kill a chicken? Because like, it got loose." <laughs> like, oh, okay. No, like they're fucking like that's what their pledge shit sacrificial was. Sacrificial shit. Yeah, no, it wasn't even sacrificial. It was just like, hey guys, like. As, like, a hazing thing, you got to murder this chicken. That's fucked up. I'm like, why? Just fucking traumatized. Yeah, kid. dude. And it's like, dude, you're in a frat. Like, people that hang on to that are fucking losers. Well, dude, you fucking ripped. So you ripped the homecoming, and then you, I was talking to you, and you're like, yo, how? Uh, what's the chances you go to Hoboken? And I told you zero. You got back with a quick zero. I was just like, oh, dude, not a shot. Like, at most, I would have went to, like, Maggie's for a few pints, but yeah. I was like, no way. But, dude, Honestly, I, I, I probably shouldn't have done it. I was well, so fucked up. I mean, wow, folks, folks. I can't believe this the is crazy. Yeah, got. this is crazy. So I'm just got off the phone yeah. with Jimmy Bloom yeah. from Third Horn. Tell yeah. him what he told you, Joe. Yeah, so I get on the phone, Jim Bloom. He's like, hey, Joe, I hope you liked uh, my buddy Brett who came by last week. And we're like, oh, we liked him. We liked him. Jim has more great news. I mean, last last week they announced their Brett coin offering on the platform, their new asset class. This week, it's like they just want to keep shooting for the moon. Third Horn Investments, and uh, folks, there's, I, folks, no, there's, I don't no, know string, how there's no strings attached. I'm going to say what I'm going to say, but you're going to be say, what's the catch? There's zero there's catch. There's no catch. Prefacing that. 321 Cigarettes is giving- No, no, not 321 Cigarettes. Sorry. Third, Third Horn, Horn Invest- Invest- I'm sorry, I'm mossed up. Sorry, we're mossed out. Yeah, see moth. No, yeah, <laughs> so Jim Bloom at Third Horn Investments, they are offering for free, no strings attached, no catch- $50,000 to all of their new customers if you sign up using the code GOODCRACK. Yes, folks, you don't even have to invest a dollar. You don't even have to load your account. You make an account, you sign up, and you got fifty grand. Let me make this perfectly clear. You sign up. You don't even... There's, you don't even do anything. You just go on, put your email in, and write good crack. What is the code? It, the, yeah, good crack. $50,000 will be moved into your bank account. Yeah. Like, I actually... Well, well, into your third horn account, and then it's like Venmo. You can withdraw it to yeah. your bank account. But... But... Regardless. Yeah. And then here's the thing. You can invest that. You could take it. I would say invest it because we... You could double it. And you can double it, double, triple, triple it, it, quadruple it, quintuple it. It's Jim Bloom, guys. He, yeah, the guy doesn't fucking like, miss. And especially now with the Bitcoin offering, it's like, yeah. folks, I, I I don't know how we could sell this any better. It's it's a free fifty. This grand. is gonna be the, this is gonna be the a, shortest ad we ever do solely because it's it's that it, easy. It's that easy. Sign up. Sign up. Get fifty thousand dollars. I don't know. You know, you might be asking yourself, who in their right mind just gives out fifty thousand dollars? Jim Bloom does, and Jim he's Bloom. and he's in the rightest mind he's ever been in. Yeah. So just to reiterate that for you, folks, you're gonna go to www thirdhorninvestments.com slash good crack and you're going to use the code good crack when you sign up and make a new account and folks a little tip for you you might have signed up over the last two months because of this podcast make another account make another account it's free real estate it's free money it's, it's free good money. for the economy it's going to grow the economy because I wrote the bill on the environment it helps everyone hurts no one Folks, Third Horn Investments, tell them the crack boy sent you. Smoke them if you can. Jimmy Blue. I mean, it's a perfect segue. We've had so many funny long nights at bars. Yeah. We have. Even and last many, weekend, many was, we didn't get to really tell you guys about our weekend last weekend because we had the Brett yeah. podcast. And then even just like Austin, too. I had a lot of Oh, yeah, Austin dude. Shit Let's fucking, fucking. Let me hear about Austin. Give me some Austin stories. Dude, so first of all, I, I'd never been to Austin. The only place in Texas I had been was Dallas one time because my brother's living out there right now. He's working out there. So I went to visit him two weekends ago in Dallas. You know, we had a nice night, ripped it up in Dallas. 
we went to a fucking killer restaurant, man, called Nick and Sam's. It's really famous out there. Like, it was Dirk's favorite spot. They got, like, a steak named after him. Fucking, it's one of ten places in the country that have 100% Kobe beef. Oh, really? Like, they have a whole entire Kobe and Wagyu menu. But their Kobe beef is so exclusive and pure that like one of ten restaurants that have it. So we had we fucking balled out and had a crazy dinner. It was probably one of the craziest dinners I experienced because it was the full on like they brought out the board, showed you all their steaks. Really? Like where crazy was this? Shit. This was in Austin. In Dallas. It's called Dallas. Nick and Sam's. They have a few of them throughout Texas, though. I mean, like they like the the hostess like they laid our napkins on our laps like it was like oh, crazy really? shit like it was like a sexual thing very dude but no like did you uh, all the women gorgeous too like was the really steak cool. amazing oh my goodness you had kobe beef no no i crushed the surf and turf oh really i was just like i need me that you had some lobster yeah did you uh did you fuck the steak oh you ever have a steak so good so that rare like, that you could stick your dick in it well not even that it's rare i feel like what that's a little weird no, no, no. Why would it, like, making it rare more fuckable? It's a little mushy, you know? Oh, I thought you were talking about that it was bloody. You pulled the blood out. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it just tastes so good that you want to put your dick inside. Yeah, it. and that was only night one, dude. We did that. And so next day, we played some golf, and that was just, like, that was great. Oh, you didn't tell me that. How was that? How was your we golf? Both, the... We both played. So the way it works is, I guess, I don't know. Some places, if you, like, make a, a two-person reservation, they'll just let you play a twosome. Other places, it's like it always has to be a foursome, so they'll match you with two others. They match us with two guys, uh, Jamie and Adam. Really cool dudes. I mean, straight Texans from Texas. And so that was funny because we were playing so awful, like awfully, and these kids were like balling. So like me and Ange were just kind of like in our cart cracking up, you know, like we just kept ordering beers. Like It was like 11 a.m. We're just like, fuck it, let's have a good time. And then afterwards, linked up with his buddy, and we hit Austin. And that was really crazy, man, because I've never been to Austin, but I've also, like, I've never really seen Texas. I've seen Dallas, and, like, that's a city, right? So driving from Dallas to Austin on a Friday afternoon at 5 o'clock, it was, like, a three-and-a-half-hour ride. We ripped Green Lights audiobook the whole ride. How, you probably could, like, finish half of it. In that Dude, fight. we finished a good amount. Yeah. And... We went through just like straight Texas. Like we went through Waco. You forget how fucking big Texas is. Not even how big, bro. We did not go over a single hill bump or like. It's just all flat. All flat. Isn't it like you could fit like forty New Jerseys in Texas? Yeah, and you can you can fit like eighty Rhode Islands. Yeah, something like that. Dude, so driving the drive to Austin was in itself this like cool little experience, at least for me traveling because. Dude, driving through Waco, man, you just see a town in ruin, you know? Yeah. Like, it's dead. Anything that was there, dead. It's just fucking dead. We were driving through, like, some of the suburban neighborhoods. Like, not good. Really? And just like, well, at least where we were. I don't know. I don't know what the I guess the, the whole... only, like, frame of reference I have for that is, like... The fucking uh, cult. There What's... will be blood. No, well, there oh, will be you're blood. talking about Waco in general. Yeah, I'm talking Waco oh, right yeah, now. You're talking oh, yeah, not just all church time. with David Koresh. Yeah, uh, David Koresh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, dude, it was really crazy. And so we get to Austin, and we got an Airbnb like six minutes from Rainy Street, like the downtown. And we, you know, uh, we, we drop our shit off. We had some chickens in the backyard next to us. We greeted them. We didn't kill them. And then we were off to the Wait, races. What do you mean you had chickens? Next door to us, there was like 12 chickens and a hen and rooster. What were they doing? They were just balling out. They Why were, were they there? I guess the property next to us was like a giant estate. Like it was like the house was like 50 yards away, but we were next to like their backyard and it was craziness. They just had chickens? Yeah, you could see Austin right there too. Yeah. Really cool. I, I always like get confused about the layout of Austin because I know it's like a kind of a transition, like seamless transition from suburbs into city. Yeah, right? no, no, very, very. Our house was six minutes from the city, but it was totally suburbs. In well, the suburbs, uh, you've been to LA. Yeah. Did you ever, did you drive like on Mulholland Drive at all? Like from the, like, I'm sure I did, dude. That was a long time ago, and I don't really remember. The neighborhoods of Austin reminded me a lot of, like, the valley. Like, when you go over the hill, and then you're driving down Mulholland Drive into the valley, it it reminded me that a lot of that. Because houses close together, but the houses, it'll be, like, a Victorian house, 
an old style house, fully modern house. And just like, yeah, I get the, what you're saying. just the whole layout, very windy roads. And so whatever it, that just reminded me of that. But we hit rainy street and rainy street is a big uh, spot just lined with bars and shit. And we were going out for one drink. It turned into a night out, of course, as it does. And it was fun, man. We were talking to like a lot of cool people, a lot of cool girls. We were just telling everyone that my brother was a world championship rock, paper, scissors player to break the ice. So we were playing a lot of rock, paper, scissors. Told them he was a magician. He had a little magic trick where he could guess your number. We were kind of building our rep and we didn't know it. And then that Saturday, we hit the UT Texas Tech game, which was really fucking cool, man. Because like I was telling you, living in New York, things are pretty wild right now with mandates and all that. UT, man, 100,000 people in a stadium just getting rowdy. And UT beat Texas Tech like 70 to 32. So Jesus. it was just like an absolute slaughter. That's like probably a big game, too, for them, Huge right? game. Like probably, yeah. And all these people from Texas Tech are coming from Lubbock. So they're coming like six hours south yeah. to fucking UT just yeah. to get their titties spanked. We left at halftime. Yeah. We fucking left at halftime, really? and we were on 6th Street. So that is that what it's like? You just walk out and you're back onto Sixth Street. No, no, we got on one of those little like um, bike bike oh. taxis if they have in the city, but except in Austin, it was thirteen dollars, not five hundred. <laughs> so we took one of those and just like Sixth Street was just an absolute shit show, getting shit faced. I mean, we we went to an the game was an eleven a.m. kickoff, so we went to tailgate at nine thirty a.m. I was blacked out by ten thirty a.m. <sighs> And we just had stamina, dude. We finished dude, on just six... even talking about that Bro. right now makes me feel ill. We dude, left I just Sixth can't Street five o'clock. Remember when day drinking was the best? I I still think it's the best. I like it if I know. I don't know. I... You just need to. You just need to. You gotta have a very motivated group of people because with us, they like it was me and my brother and his friend, and we met up with their friends. But ultimately, it was us three. We got home at five from that whole debauchery. We ate sandwiches. We laid down for 20 minutes, and then they were like, "We're back." Yeah, and man. we just were. There's we not to like a good rally if you just pace it out perfectly yeah. with food and chilling. And That's really what but it was. I just I haven't been doing it right in the last like year or two, and I like uh, anytime I day drink and then try to go out at night, especially down the shore, I'm always yeah. just like miserable. I'm with you, dude. The only thing, the only reason I was there is because I got my brother. I got his boy. It's like, yeah. how could I not? No, Any other course, scenario, yeah. though, I'm like, fuck you like guys. Like yesterday I'm was like blunts. a huge learning lesson for me where it's like, I can't drink all day violently and then try to go out at night. Yeah, you just got to just, you got to like just crush claws or like beers and shit yeah. all day. Once you, once you throw the licky in there. I, I was just doing claws. Yeah, we well, vodka soda. But. but the fun, so now the funny part is that night we get back out, we're zombies. It's like, we shouldn't even be out. All my brother's friends that we met up with, they were all done by 7 p.m. We were going back to Rainy Street. And so that was And now what is Rainy Street? Like, Rainy Street and 6th Street are, like, the two big party streets? Yeah, 6th Street is probably, like, 15 minutes, uh, I guess, north of Rainy. Rainy's closer to, like, the bridge into the suburbs. But this is all, like, honestly closer than 15 minutes. It's literally, like, six-minute drive. Yeah. Um, But Rainy Street is just, like, it's literally bar, 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 bar. Like, they're this close to one another. Because what it used to be was it used to be a residential suburban neighborhood. And they were going to knock it down and build high rises. And all these owners of houses and stuff said, fuck you, you're not taking our land. And they just started opening bars and restaurants. And it caught wind. And now it's like a street of just bars, restaurants, food trucks. Like, there's not a single building or house on the street that's an establishment that isn't a bar or restaurant. Oh, really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. Is it, like, in the middle of a suburb then? No, 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 no. Well, because now the city is the city. Oh, okay. When that was happening, it was like probably... Was transitioning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so now we're out, we're hanging out, mingling with people, and I guess the night before, we really cemented who we were, because... I'm sitting at I'm sitting with my brother's friend Joe. My brother ran, or yeah, my brother ran to the bathroom, and this I start talking to this chick. She's beautiful, man, like Southern Belle, beautiful, and she's very cool. Like we're just chopping it up, and all of a sudden her friend comes up behind her, and she looks at me, and she's like, "What? Wait, what the? Fu- Don't fucking talk to him." And I'm like, "What? I'm like, what the fuck's your problem?" She's like, "She's like, uh, like Alexa." 
that's the magicians. That Those are the magicians, Alexa. And we're like, what? And she's like, yeah, that's the fucking magicians, the rock, paper, scissors guys. And they're like, fuck those guys. And they all start pulling her away. And we're like, we're like, we've been there for like three hours. We're like, we literally just got here. What are you talking? They're like, yeah, fuck the magicians. Like, why were they mad at you? Dude, that's what we said. We didn't, like, everyone that we had met the night before was like, thought it was so fun and funny, just like the way we were going about shit. Like, we were laughing with so many people. So we're like, I guess we got, um, I guess we got like a bad rep somehow for just dropping magic on people. What was you? It was like the what was the whole magician narrative? It's all my brothers. It was just like he would tell them to pick a number. I hate. Oh, I, hate, I can't. I can't spoil his trick. Yeah, dude. yeah you told you me. Can't spoil yeah, his I know trick. the trick. Yeah, you could guess any number. But he was able to guess their number after doing a bunch of crazy shit, and yeah, people were blown away. But they were they were trying to run the magicians out of there, and the night basically ended where it was us at midnight after being out since nine a.m. Phones dead. We couldn't get a. There was no. We couldn't get an Uber. We were trying to get on the scooters. Couldn't get on the scooters. Phones dead. The best part now is we start going up to people and we're like, "Hey, our Uber was gonna cost us like sixteen dollars max, like fifteen max." We're like, "Hey, we have forty dollars. Like, can you guys call us an Uber and we'll just give you this cash?" And everyone's like, "Fuck off, no!" And we're like, "What? What?" That's so weird. I'm like, the one time I'm. Southerners are supposed to be nice. The one time I'm leaning on Southern hospitality. We go up to another group of people. We're like, guys, can you fucking get us these scooters? We will give you the 40 cash right here, right now. No, fuck you. We're like, what the fuck? <laughs> so we're standing in the street and we're like, what the fuck do we do? Like, I don't even know how to walk back to our house. All of a sudden, a yellow cab turns the corner. And dude, this guy was such a fucking character. And he's like, get the fuck in, man. Dude. And he was hilarious. trying to drive us to the even strip Even in club. Texas, we do... We've just been doing advertisements for like cabs. yellow cabs, yeah. Yellow fuck cabs fuck Ubers, man. Dude, ever since we've been talking about that, anytime I'm in Manhattan, I take yellow cabs. I never Uber anymore. Yeah, that's not. I'm sure you Uber sometimes. Yeah. So this guy's trying to get us to go to the strip club, and we're like, "Listen, buddy, any other day we would be down, but we, I don't even know how we made it this far." And then that was it. Woke up the next morning, drive back to Dallas. We stopped at a Mickey D's in the re- middle of Texas, and just buried like sixty dollars worth of Mickey D's. It was Nuggets. gross. No, they, we were, it was breakfast time. We got there 10 minutes before breakfast was ending. So we did like a $30 order of just chicken biscuits and all that. And then the screens go black and then it just throws on lunch and dinner. And we're like, oh, so we get like 20 piece McNuggets, some burgers. <laughs> <laughs> we were just Dude. in shambles. But yeah, Classic. all in all, great time. Yeah, man. Tekka. And then we had a great weekend last weekend. It was a yep. long and exhausting one. What did we do? Friday, we went in to... Friday, we were with Birdo. We were with Birdo and some gem. of the homies. Yeah, hit the gem, which and then, is a uh, great bar. One and there, one. You know? one and is that one. one and one? Is that what is it called? Yeah. yeah, that place was kind of fun. It was fun. It was just way too packed. Yeah, and then we called packed it an early sardines. night, actually, just because I think everyone was ready to go. And then me and Joey D, you guys were going back to Mary Hill, right? Yeah. We but went they, down to Off the Wagon. Yeah, Joey D and I were just aimlessly walking around the village. But that's where I wanted to. The craziest part is that the place that I was going in my head was Off the Wagon. And like we walk and you're like, oh, what about this place? And I'm like, oh, wait, holy shit. Yeah, we're here. This yeah. is it. <laughs> so we went and had a pint of Guinness, talked some shit, um, and then got Mickey D's after, which I regretted immediately. And then I slept at your house, right? That was yeah. I stayed over because we were supposed we to were do supposed the podcast to be with Brett, with Brett but Saturday. he had to just change it to Sunday. So then instead, we you know we woke up on Saturday, went into Manhattan, and did an open mic at the Grizzly Pair, which was a lot of fun. Great mic, great comedians. We were just there for way too long. Yeah, it was a real yeah. We dude. were drinking too, and I, by the end of it, it was so exhausting. And we hadn't eaten anything. I we know. thought we were gonna pop in, do a mic. And then pop out and eat. Yeah. It was like two and a half hours later. Well, what it was is two, it was a, a lot of comics. Way longer, Mike, because there was a lot of comics. And like after we did our set, them. and we were like fifteen, so like we obviously had to wait a while to get up. But then, one of our comic friends, Joe, he was going up too, and he ended up being like the fucking last person. So we waited till he went up, and we're like, Jesus, we've been here for like two and a half hours. This is a long one. But well, then, we got to get him on soon. Too. Yeah, great kid. And then where'd we go after that? That burger restaurant was fucking amazing. Paul's the burger joint. Paul's the burger joint was East amazing. Village. Great, great. Yeah. Great, Before great, that, great we went to Washington Square Park and we're drinking coffees and having bagels. Just enjoying the character. In that morning, and I was like, man, like I was looking around Washington Square Park, and it's across the street from NYU, and you have all these characters and hipsters and shit, and I'm like, 
all these people fucking suck. I wouldn't mind if all of them didn't exist. You like, feel? I, I, I love it. Like, I know, I, it's fun I to look, watch. I look at that and I say, like, I think, I think Washington Square Park defines what New York is the best. And it, whether you like that or not yeah, is totally yeah, opinionated. That's what it but, is. It's like, I don't know, there's a lot of, a lot of crazies. Yeah, I, I, I like that. Nah, too. listen, it's it's fun to watch, for yeah. sure. Don't get me wrong. I would never just be, like, one of those jerk-offs that goes there to hang out, though. Eh, I don't it know. depends. It or really I, depends. I, I guess a, I'm... I, you, you don't smoke pot. Yeah. Like, so, like, for me, it's like, I'll be in the area, and it's like, dude, let's go, like, hang in the grass, smoke a joint or two, like, yeah. enjoy the scenery. Yeah, I don't but, know. But, like, some days they'll have events there for the whole park, and, like, that's... Like, I remember they had... um. They had this big, big, like, how do you say it? Is like Hare Krishna? Yeah. Is that what it's like? The Buddhist thing? Like the shit? Buddhist thing, yeah. They had, it was it was park-wide. So the whole entire fountain area, they had different tents all around. That was a day, man, where I was just like, ho- like I was so overwhelmed. I was like, holy shit. Because you just had, like, hundreds of, like, these Buddhists there. And it's all, like, it's all Indian guys, Asian guys. And then you just got randomly, like, the few like white dudes thrown in who look like they're like from our neighborhood and like abandon their families to go practice Buddhism or something. And then they come up to you and put a bracelet on. Yeah. And it's like, now you owe me ten dollars. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, you remember that, dude? Dude, that's like one of the biggest scams. That man that had. wasn't that wasn't Holly Krishna though. That was like some Chinese. It was a Chinese group. That's just a scam. Yeah. yeah. I watched a video about like NYC scams. And yeah. That's one of the main ones. Well, dude, do you remember? Do you remember when I told you the guy with the glasses? Yeah, dude. Dude, dude you I'm, know what's funny? I, I kind of was going to bring something. That kind of leads me to something about Birdo, but I don't know if he wants me to tell that story on there. But, uh, what? I could? Okay. So you, you tell your story first. Because yeah. that was, remember I Googled it after? And I'm and like, we, Joe, that's like a real articles, scam. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I'm walking home from school. So I'm in the Upper East Side. I'm walking to 55th. And this guy is like walking at me. And he's clearly like a crackhead, which like whatever. It's New York. He's walking past me. And he bumps into me and like, like, like blatantly and purposefully, like I was like, well, you obviously just did that. He <laughs> bumps into me and he drops his glasses and he picks them up and he's like, yo, what the fuck, bro? You literally just fucked up my glasses. You broke my glasses. And I'm like, well, didn't you say there was also like my favorite part of the story is like, didn't he just have like glass, like a handful of glass already too? Like wasn't like the glass. No, from- no, it wasn't that. It was that like the glasses were already. It Broken, literally looked right? like he took a hammer <laughs> yeah. and just smashed the shit out of them. Yeah. And I'm, so I'm like, at first I'm flustered and I think that I did it. And yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry. Like my bad. Like you just bumped into me. And then he holds the glasses out and he's like, bro, I can't wear these. Like look what you fucking did to them. And it literally looks like a hammer. And so now I'm like, fuck. And people are looking at me, and just my instinct just got me into like an attack mode. And I'm like. And he's like, bro, how much money you got on you? Like, give me, I need something, bro. And I'm like, I'm not paying for your glasses, dude. And he's like, bro, I don't give a fuck. Even 10 or 20, you got to give me something. Like, you fucking did this. And now I'm just like, listen, buddy, I'm not giving you anything. You're going to back the fuck up or I'm going to kick the shit out of Like, not like, but like pretty much. I'm yeah. just like, get the fuck away. And he's like, really, bro? And I'm like, really? And he's like, fuck you, man. Like, fuck you. And like, he like walks away all pissed. And then you came I right come back, back I tell dorms. you. I was like flustered because I was very close to just like I was throwing like, that's one. That's crazy, dude. Yeah. That must be a scam. And then we Googled it. And there's that's a, one. There's a full on article. Yeah, that's just for when that they scam. get tourists with a lot. And then they do. There's another one the people food. do the food, food or the uh, medicine. They'll drop a bottle of pills and be like, you fucking spill my medicine. I'm going to die now. Like, you need to give yeah. me $150. Yeah. Big scam. That's a good one. That's a good yeah, That I mean, one definitely listen. works. And do you know what's sad <laughs> is like you're. You're not only are you like been in New York but at that time you were there for a year, but you know you're a Jersey guy, so you're not like a fucking pussy, like you know. But mm-hmm. they probably get like a lot of tourists or like oh, transplants yeah, man. with that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because like you said, they just come at you so hard right away, and you get flustered. Right. And it's like well, you know, a lot you'll of be people, like, I have twenty dollars, and they'll be like, fine, give right. me that. And a then, lot of people probably realize that they didn't do it, but they kind of just. Don't they want yeah. to de-escalate it? And so they're just like, here, take this ten dollars and fuck off. But there's I'm like, a nah. reason I had no were. money. I had no money, so I was like, I can't even give you the five dollar bill I have in my wallet. Yeah, yeah. that leads me to a story about my good friend Berta. Berta, do you want to come on and tell the story, or should I do it? Uh, yeah, I'll, I can tell it. Okay, come on, come on, come here. This is a story, Berto. We gotta figure out. Climb over the back right here, Berto. Yeah, yeah, climb over. Berto mentioned to me one night. 
when right when he moved to New York. He moved to New York about like what a year ago, a little over a year ago, to start school at uh you know oh. in New York. He's in dental school, and he's living in Murray Hill area. And he texts me. He's like, dude, there's this really bad story. I don't want to tell anyone. Something bad happened. And then I'm like, what is it about? All all he said to me was like leather jackets and i looked it up because i knew he probably got scammed and i found the scam right away and i'm like yeah. oh my god so let me guess some sharp looking italian yeah, guy i literally guy. told him verbatim what i what it was and he's like fuck dude yeah, how do you know that i was like I some even... sharp looking italian guy comes up to you and said you have to buy five leather jackets and they're real genuine italian leather <laughs> and he's like, yeah, that's exactly. I gotta give context though. Yeah, yeah. Like, you g- you give us the full story from your perspective because yeah. these cons, you know, they're different from. Person. Yeah, I mean, just like you said to Joey, like, I feel like I'm, you know, I'm from Jersey. Like, my dad's raised me never to be like a sucker or anything. Yeah, like that. I and you know what? Everything. You're a smart kid, and I don't think you fall for like the glasses or pill bottle one, like I nah, just said. Nah. But the one that you're about to explain is a weird scam that I've yeah. never heard of before. Well, I guess it started. Um, it was. It actually happened. It was near your block, right? It was on my block. It was wow. it was Halloween of last year on October 31st. And this is coming up on a year since it happened. Yeah. And um, I was like in this mind space of like kind of like, I don't know if they could see. Um, of like, you know, I was like reading the Bible, like looking into like different religions ah, and shit. Fuck me. Sorry. Just cut yourself. I already have a really big cut on my finger from an accident. I sliced <laughs> myself with a knife, and I just ran it along the couch and reopened it. Jesus. But it's all right. Continue. Um, so I was, like, reading the Bible and, like, like different, like, works of, like, Yeah, like I remember you were very, like, like into, like, you know. Spirituality. Spirituality and me being a better person. Yeah, at least, like, that time last year. And something that I had taken out of, like, my readings was, like, trust people, like, always, like, give people the benefit of the doubt and like do things because like it's out of the goodness of your heart and stuff like yeah. that. And like that day I had that epiphany that morning, the day I was scammed. So I was like, fucking so I was, yeah, I was going about my day, like, like eye shining, like hopeful for the future and stuff. And <laughs> I'm walking down my street on 27th, right by the gym. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I'm I'm walking and this guy he like pulls up in a car and it's like a really nice car it's I forget what it was I think it was a Benz, it was like an SUV and uh, he he dressed he was dressed like top to bottom in like designer clothes he looked like legit and dude and it's so funny because they, they fake probably but, dude, oh, yeah. but that's the thing that's the thing is like if you read this scam online like the way Birdo tells it is exactly how people yeah. recount it like. A literally like a snappy dressing a tan Italian man will roll up in a dope car and dope clothes. Fire. But beyond that was he had a driver. Really? And he had a driver and the driver had like a turtleneck on and he was bald and like The Rock. Yeah, literally it was it was Dwayne the Rock Johnson and Little did you know that that guy's <laughs> not even a driver. <laughs> he's no, just he's a scam. Probably artist. doesn't even have his fucking license. But <laughs> um he was like holding the steering wheel the entire time and like as I'm talking to this guy, he's just like staring straight forward like the car is parked like i'm thinking this guy's like a robot he's just like a driver so this snappy dressing italian gets out no so he so i'm walking down the street and he goes excuse tu parli italiano in from the car from the car from the car okay yeah and so i I speak a little bit of italian i get by conversationally yeah and you um, like Italian, so this is already a hard one for you. Exactly. So I'm like, you know. I'm excited. Like, I I, have, I don't really speak Italian with a lot yeah. of people. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, I speak Italian. And he starts telling me um, in Italian that he's like, um, like he, he needs help. Like, he just got out of, it was fashion week, I think, that week. And he's like, <laughs> I just left a showing and I have all this clothes. And, like, I'm leaving to Italy soon. And, uh, like, I don't want to, I don't want to hold on to it. And because I will have to pay taxes on it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, that sucks. Like, I'll, I'll take it off your hands. Just give it to me. <laughs> and he's like, no, no, just give me. And mind you, like, as I'm telling the story, like, I, I beat Well, he's telling you up. what? He's got, like, leather jackets, yeah. right? And he's showing you them, and they look, like, legit. And, yeah, yeah. And he's saying, like, these are what? Dope leather designer yeah, jackets. He says they're, like, San Ferragamo. Okay, jackets. yeah, Ferragamos are nice. Yeah. And, uh... Like I'm, I'm, I beat myself up even telling this story, uh, cause it sounds <laughs> so fucking stupid, but 
Um, so he says, you buy the jackets. I'll give you a good deal. You'll make your money back. Exactly. Yeah. He's like, they still got the tags on them. Just go to the store and return them and or like just sell them. And I'm like, I guess like and he like gives me a number and I give him a number. And um, and like part of me is just like, you know what, like I'm going to help this guy out. Like this is kind of like. Did you ever think during the process, like, this might be a scam? I was, like, looking at him in his fucking eyes, man. I was trying to get a read off of him. Was he good? Is that what it was? He was really good. He was really good. And he was telling me about, like, his son in Italy. And, like, he was like, yeah, my son in Italy is, like, your age. And I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm trying to piece together the fucking. What what age would you say it was? He was, like, a 50-year-old? He was in his 50s, yeah. yeah. What a piece of shit, What a fucking dirtbag. You know? Yeah. Oh, those motherfuckers. I I guarantee the guy wasn't even Italian. No, so the. (laughs) Probably Armenian. Guaranteed. The funny thing. (laughs) Eastern European. Yeah. Oh, yes, I'm Italian. You see? (laughs) Yeah, some jerk off. The the conversation slowly evolved to speak in English. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why'd you start off in in Italian? He was speaking perfect English. He was speaking perfect English. (laughs) (laughs) Did he have an accent? Yeah, he had an accent, but he was speaking perfect English. It's probably some jerk off from like Juilliard testing his acting ability. Yeah. So I fucking. Just to pay his bill. Yeah. 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 So he starts talking English. Did did that ring a red flag? It ring a red red flag, but I was still like, fuck it, like you know what, this guy's asking for help, and I'm gonna help him. And I go to the ATM and I pull out cash to pay for these jackets. He ends up. I end up offering to pay. It was a shit ton of jackets. Like how many? I think it was like seven, eight jackets, and then like still have them. A backpack. No, I I gave most of them away. uh, I would have liked one. I don't have. I, I might. I, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I still might have one. Were they nice fakes? They were nice fakes. Oh, dude, it gets so so much more embarrassing. Okay. Um, yeah, because didn't you say like he showed you that they were real? Like, didn't he say he liked the like? Yeah, he did the lighting. He did the the flame test to the leather. What did he do? He like he put it. He like lit a match or like lit one of those lighters and like he put it to the leather and he's like, see, see, it's good the leather. Is it's real? Is real? <laughs> I'm like, I don't fucking know. So you go to the ATM and pull out what a couple hundred or something? No, no, not a couple hundred. I pull out seven hundred dollars. Okay. And um, and I go and I go and give him the money, and as I'm giving him the money. Like, this is me, like, being, like, you know what, give people the benefit of the doubt and bullshit like that. Um, I grabbed his hand, and I shook, and I looked in his eyes, and I go, you better not be fucking me. Oh, you said that? Yeah. And he, like, looked at me, and he's like, no, 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 brother. And he hugged me. He gets in the car. This is now on 3rd Ave, because I, wa- I had to walk and find an ATM. Couldn't even give you a ride, that piece of shit. No, no, no. So, <laughs> the moment I knew I fucked up, the moment I knew I fucked up was when he got in the car to leave the, his driver that was just mute like this, just staring forward the entire time. Like he looked like a, like a bond villain, like bald. Uh, he like turned to me and smiled. Really? And I was like, you motherfuckers. That's and drove hilarious, off. dude. So that the, guy was just a fucking scam artist. Too. Oh yeah. That's funny. Yeah. They, they were both in on it. And when, so you gave him 700 and they gave you the jackets. Yeah. And I got the jackets. Was like at the back of a trunk. He gave you just a shit ton of jackets. Yeah. 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 And what are you just walking down the street now with seven leather jackets? <laughs> yeah, so and when did you go home and be like, all right, fuck, these are all fake. The, no, I was walking home and I knew, I knew they were fake. How? Because of the guy smiled at me. Uh, that was just that was help. it. Yeah, for me, I was like, yeah. I, so I'm. We a, got you, motherfucker. But then, s- did you like get home and look at the jackets, and were they like blatantly fake, or yeah, they looked good? Yeah. And then I looked up exactly what you looked up, and that's why I was laughing when you told me like you knew exactly what it was because you probably saw the same thing that I saw. Yeah. And like, my my roommates were there, Eddie and John, at the time, and they were like, "What the fuck is that?" And I was like, "Oh, these jackets." And I was telling people like, "Oh, they just gave it to me." Because I was too embarrassed yeah, to say yeah, that yeah. I got scammed. And I I, like, I was scared because initially you told me you got robbed. Yeah, well, I mean, essentially. like. Yeah, like yeah. I thought someone like fucking went up to you with a knife or a gun and was like, give me your money. It felt that way. It yeah. It felt I mean, like listen, I was violated. Afterwards, it always feels like fuck, like I got violated. But yeah. listen, man, it happens to the best of us. And that's a weird one. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. you know what's good about that scam is you think you're getting something out of it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Where the other one, it's just like relying on the person to just be a good person and be like, fuck, I feel bad I broke this person's glasses. But you also could be a bad person. Like, well, I don't give a fuck. Fuck you. Yeah. But in this way, it's like, oh, I'm getting something out of this. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a good scam. Yeah, they got you. Yeah, they fucking got me. And I, like, went home and I just threw them in my closet and I didn't look at them until I was like... I know. I remember you were very hurt about it for a while. Yeah, I, I wrote in my journal. I was like, um, 
today I got happy Halloween. Today I got scammed. A sucker's born every minute. <laughs> and then that day, like everything that I was like woke up feeling like great and optimistic just went right down the drain. It was like not you like, just went full Bukowski. Yeah, and then it's like the Joker. Like, our greatest, <laughs> our greatest men die in alleyways under newspapers, <laughs> while our worst men get statues in the park. Yeah, Dude, literally, Berta, like this is like the Berta's Joker moment. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> when I realize society's fucked up, bro. Society. society. Right in your journal. But yeah, now that I've the exposed myself as a fucking moron, I'll let you guys get back to it. Yeah. Well, thank you for the story, Birdo. Yeah, it happens to the best it's of always us. nice to have a little guest drop in. Oh. We love Birdo. Oh, man. Um, Dude, yeah. we're powering through. We're already at an hour. Oh, we are at an hour? Yeah. Well, then let's start wrapping up. So, yeah, New York City is crazy, guys. You can get scammed. You can go to the bars, meet some crazy the people. The one thing we did, we wanted to, like, discuss, like, our, our differences we see in, like, such as, like, an Austin Hoboken, whatever scene, yeah. New York scene. But you know what? They didn't. They didn't. They didn't earn it this week. It's yeah. Right. I mean, listen, we'll save it for another. Yeah, one, yeah. seriously. Uh, but no, it was a good weekend last weekend. Um, we ran into after the Grizzly Pair. We ate at Paul's the Burger Joint, and then we were heading home to Brooklyn. Yeah. And yeah. we ran into Briston Maroney. Yeah, yeah. Who is a musician? I don't know. If, he's pretty small time, so I don't know if anyone would know him. But like, I am a big fan of his music, and we had ironically, me and Berto and our whole squad had ironically seen him perform at See Here Now that the festival weekend in Asbury, literally the weekend yeah. before. And me and Joey were walking down the street, and I look up, and I just see this guy standing on the corner, like, hanging around and doing nothing. I'm like, Briston Maroney? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, dude, big fan. It's like, all right, guys. Um, so we all right, we brought good news today with the Manscaped um, partnership. Yeah. yeah. But, there, you know, with the good comes the bad. Um, you guys might have noticed last week when we were doing the Wallet Wallet, um, we seemed a little under stress. Um, and we, we were, and yeah. we can't. Say why, um, but just I know went back and watched, and I think you can see why. You can see you, why. Yeah. We've been on a journey with the wallet. Yeah, Lock. it's and just been a. It's been clearly weird. we it's thought originally getting into it. You know, it was a sponsor, and we said, "What is it? It's a wallet for your wallet." Quite mm. plain and simple, you know. And we slowly but surely realized that, uh, everything was not what it seemed with the wallet. Wallet. Oh. I, I'm, I'm not. Once again, we've gotten to a lot of interesting scenarios over the last couple months because of the wallet wallet but um it was not just a company that sold wallets for your wallet they had some ties and narratives and stuff that we frankly didn't want to be a part of i'm willing to say that they don't even sell anything because we have never even seen one we just we just got the manscape thing yeah this they, week we got manscape they stuff. send us all of their right. shit it was great wallet wallet we've been doing it for two months we've gotten paid twice from them now yeah and it was like what 16 dollars or something it, it was like it was like a little under 40 Jesus. But after splitting and all of that, I don't even know why we did it for that long. Then, listen, I'm not going to name any names, but a governmental organization that, that deals handles in, with like central intelligence of the oh, country. Well, we just said it, but uh, it's all right. And never well, mind. We didn't say what we didn't say yet. Yeah. Um, it's the CIA. The Wallet Fuck Wallet it, was Fuck a em. shell company for the CIA, Fuck and them. for some reason, they wanted to invest in this podcast. I think they never really explained it, but they they were trying to like invade Cuba or something, and thought we would be a good. No, investment. no, it's like it was the the CEO of the company had like betrayed them. They wanted us to go in and do like a you know killing, a nice little assassination, do their well, dirty work. Like I don't know always. if we're allowed to say all this, but long story short, we got into a lot of bad dealings with them, and they knew we were unhappy. A lot of contentious phone calls, dude. This yeah. week has just been like heavy with that shit. And long story short, we were, were we dropped by the Wallet Wallet? Oh, yeah, no. This is our last Wallet Wallet ad. Yeah, this is our last ad for the Wallet Wallet. They paid for this ad, and so because it's 40 a month for four ads, they just gave us the 10 for this, and we're clear. Yeah, so this is the last uh, ad for the Wallet Wallet. We'll find a company to replace them. Yeah. Definitely one more, like, reputable and with an actual actual product. With an actual product. I think that, I don't even care about the reputable. I just want to, like, it's hard to sell something that, might not even exist. Yeah. You know? Which, like 321 Cigarettes, a real company, real yeah, product. Yeah, we smoke them all the time. You know, You've seen us Third smoke Horn. Them. We've both, we have both seen returns yeah, from Third Horn. Real. Birdo got a fucking pangolin in the mail instead of the wallet wallet. Right, we got, I got a box a gun. of glass. The gun is back there. It's and over a gun there. and a Twilight New Moon soundtrack. Yeah. Um, that one guy, that fan that called in, got a, what did he get? A box full of oh, hay, like hay and hair and, and blood. Hair. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. 
Yeah, the wallet, wallet, guys. Yeah, um, so you're gonna it go. Was, it was apparently a wallet for your wallet. For your wallet, cannot but verify that. I'm not so, telling you guys shouldn't buy them. Yeah, but at this point, at this point, it wouldn't even. We're not even gonna let them keep eating up the airtime. So yeah. it's just, folks, www.thewalletwallet.com/crack, and you're gonna use the code the last dance. And I guess we can now off. tell you just because we already fucking. If you do purchase one, you're you're funding paramilitary organizations for the yeah, CIA. Yeah. yeah. So it's a CIA slush fund. So. Do with that as you please. Yeah. The wild wild. Well hey man, one door closes, another one opens. Hell yeah. So hey folks. Wallet wallet. Wallet wallet. Wallet for your wallet. It's a wallet for your wallet. A Larry David moment. It was literally like a Larry David moment. And I must, dude, afterwards, like, I was just, like, elated to meet him because, like, I think he's a great musician. Yeah, it's a, super I, was, I was laughing because you were, like, talking to him, talking to him, and be like, oh, dude, what's your name, man? And you're just like, yeah, no, dude, like, it fucking reminds me of like, that one. Me, I felt and like then he, and then he, he asked you, like, twice, and you're just like, dude, fucking, and you're just like, hey. Yeah, I sounded person. like a schoolgirl, probably. I was just like, dude, I'm just such a big fan. Like, I no, listen but, to your podcast. But you, you said that to me, but then I told you, like, he was, you, I could, like, see it. He was so elated because, like, you you were throwing out like this interview or like th- like you were not just some schmuck who's like hey Rista Maroney you were just like hey man like I, I am know. a fan he was definitely he was, he was into like, that I just once again I was so like in the moment blah 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 but like I didn't tell him my name and I we were talking because he just started a podcast ironically and we were listening to it on the way down to the festival that's how I knew that and I was like, yeah, we got a podcast too, man. He's like, oh, really? Like, they sent me the link. And I was like, yeah, I'll, like, I'll message it to you on Instagram. And I'm like, fuck, he was probably small time enough that I could have been like, give me your number and I'll text you the link and right. like, come on to our podcast as yeah, a guest yeah. or something. But then I DM'd him on Instagram right after, but it's like he's got like 30, 60,000 followers or something. So like, yeah, he I probably just, just got lost. Through. Yeah. You know, because I see it. on our account, like, Messages go into like requests, request, general, general, yeah. and all that shit. So I don't know. Maybe I'll see it one day. He'll get it. Big fans of Bristol Maroney on this podcast. Go listen to his music. He's great. Like alt rock. And, yeah, uh, yeah. I enjoyed what you sent to me. That was um um freaking out freaking on the out interstate. The interstate. Like yeah, his main song. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we get him on the pot. You know? Yeah. We are sponsored by Manscaped now. Yeah, we could we could offer up some of that Manscaped money. What? Oh. oh well, well we yeah we won't we, we actually gonna... have to start our advertising campaign with them next like, week next week yeah it's like a month long thing yeah but uh yeah we're excited yeah but um well it's funny that we saw him on Bowery Briston and that like we're gonna be going right near there today for some oh, for, uh, for Korean, Korean barbecue. barbecue dude I'm so excited me and Joey did comedy on Wednesday. I think we crushed it. Like, oh, dude, I it's I felt oh so good, guys. The comedy so shot. Like I, I I can't stress this enough, and we probably have recounted this already. But like, I was at a wedding talking to a bartender, who is the sweetest person on the planet. Yeah, Genesis, shout out Genesis. And now me and Joey D have like somewhat of like a career in comedy. I mean, not that we're making <laughs> money, but like we're we're like comedians. I, it's so weird to call myself a comedian, but like we've been doing open mics for like two months. Like we get in front of people and we yeah. do comedy. And that happened because I met this woman at a uh, wedding. You know what I mean? That was the push we needed. And, like, it wasn't just any random thing. She happened to work at this bar, the Bronx River Yacht Club, that has the comedy shop in the back. Formerly the Lantern. For, formerly the Lantern. Everyone and, make sure to, like, say that. That dude, must be like... And we're slowly learning that, like, the comedy shop's, like, one of the better mics in the comedy scene. Absolutely. And that happens to be the place Absolutely. that we just fell into you yeah. know what i mean like yeah it's so weird how all these things are working out yeah it really is yeah but st- the, that was what i was to say wednesday night so much fucking talent there everyone was crushing so many funny yep. fucking people patty is a great host Patty's too. a great host we're gonna have him on soon really yeah, great dude definitely um and yeah it was just great and then afterwards you went for a korean barbecue and it At sounded spot. amazing oh so. dude so good and, and what i love about this place is it's so like ethnic and cultured because their um their their discount policy for children is really dope. Like I saw this on your most story. most places like to do their discounts by age. It'll be like kids twelve and under get fifty percent off. With this spot, they're like kids four four and a half feet and smaller get fifty percent off. <laughs> and like the first thing that in my head, I'm like, dude, Hasbula would crush this spot <laughs> on the regular. Cause dude, they, Hasbula loves eating too. He would yeah. go there and just be like, how tall is Hasbula? Three foot? Have you yeah. ever looked that up? He's not four and a half feet. Definitely And not. if he is, <laughs> he's not taller than four and a no, half feet. I think feet. he's actually probably like two feet tall. Right? And he would just be in there grilling his meats. Like, I get my shoe in the I shoe in the I, Dude, I love his videos yeah, so much. He's still, great. Yeah, he's kind of fallen out of the mainstream, but I'm still a big fan. 
Well, that's what happens. You get thrusted in, he got the limelight, and now it's going to be like the real fans that keep him alive, yeah. and I think he'll be good. Do you remember for like a hot minute when this podcast was strictly about his book? <laughs> yeah. I Dude, mean, we recorded three tester episodes. Bird was laughing because he knows that we the first three tester episodes had like all three of them had like 15 minute sections yeah. strictly about. Yeah. Abdul. I mean, dude, I'm all for it. I can't wait till one day when we release those episodes. Oh, we're going to. It's going to be funny. Yeah, those are going to be dude, great. That one we did the business call with that one kid and he was making like some case about like Jews and how Jews run the world and we were just sitting there that just was like the craziest dude, shit ever. What are you saying? We this like pyramid scheme kid called us and like we were just pretending to be like, you know, Southerners. He, he was just like one dollar one dollar touches the hands of twelve Jews before it goes into circulation and, and we're like, like How can how can you make that this claim? Guy talking yeah, about? like how how can you I actually, actually don't claim? even know what he was talking about. No, I mean, and this either. was all to join a pyramid scheme. Right. What it, was the pyramid scam called? Like people helping people. People helping people, yeah. That was the best part. Is it's like not only does he drop like this borderline anti-Semitic no, comment, he's using it as fuel to get people to sign and up. And he for started with he C- opened CMOS. with Seam. Oh, was it Seamoss? Yeah. Wow. Well, Seamoss yeah. does have great properties. So I will. I will. Oh yeah, dude. I, I mean, will shout out Seamoss. Yeah, Joey, shout let me shout out Seamoss last week. No, dude. But it was something to do with COVID. They always say like when he you... opened with like I'm not taking the vaccine because I eat Seamoss right. and take and like, care of my body. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. That's like a. So you open with being an anti-vaxxer. You make a. Uh, I don't even know if it was anti-Semitic, just a I random think, claim I think about it, I mean, Jews. Yeah, it's it's like it's like a stereotype. I just didn't know what the fuck he was even talking about. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It was just such a claim. To and me. you are a pyramid scammer. Like this yeah. guy must be the worst pyramid scammer yeah, in the world yeah, because yeah. he's a fucking idiot. Yeah, we will release those episodes. I think we have two options for those. I like, had a friend hit me up and they're like, "Dude, why would you like? Why are you talking shit about CMOS? Like you take it every day." And I'm like, "Hey, asshole, you ever hear that?" <laughs> In comedy, it's more beneficial to make fun of things that you like, like impressions. You always do impressions of people that like you like because yeah. it's not contentious. I'm like, I'm making fun of CMOS because I fucking love it, dude. Yeah. When did you, you didn't really make fun of CMOS? Oh, I was on ju- that call. I was just being like sarcastic of just like, yeah, dude, you you Moss. And he's like, dude, tell me about it. And dude, I'm like, I didn't know anything about CMOS until last weekend, but Joey D, let me try some. It looks in kind of I don't I've never eaten this, but you know what it looks like is like you know that goo. That's in like those sterno flames under like catering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like it's like a pink. Well, goo. yeah, yeah. It's like it, that's that's the and um. It's a dissolved sea moss, right? Yeah, it's and the we um. Eat two spoonfuls of it. We ate it Saturday morning, and it's like I'm a big kombucha fan, and it like cleanses your gut and your body. I did really feel good after it. Yeah. I want to look into and, that. And this and this will cleanse your gut even better. Yeah. It's the sea. Sorry, yeah. We had sea moss gel, gel, yeah. Because yeah. actual sea moss is like sea moss. It's, it's like just moss fucking. In the sea. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get. Uh, we want to get the creator on because you you get Doctor Sebi. You have a doctor who's like a street person that sells you. Oh on. yeah, Gem to Free Spirit. We should we should look into. Oh wait, that. who's Doctor Sebi? Doctor Sebi is like the is a famous. Um, oh. Doctor, philosopher, no, fuck that health guy. guy. I want the guy that you get your CMOS. Yeah, from. yeah, we'll get What's him on name? here. Gem. Gem. Yeah. Yeah, he sounds like the man. He is the man. I he, like. He this. has a he has a hell of a story. I told you yeah. he was like homeless for years. And I might start uh, having you it. get me CMOS from him, and I will take it home to New Jersey. Yeah, maybe we can maybe we can get a sponsored ad from Gem. Dude, be like, dude, give us give us CMOS. both give us both each a thirty ounce jar, and then we'll do an ad. Yeah. You know, I'm down with that. That's Bird, a month You ever eat CMOS? Are you familiar with the qualities of it? It has 94 out of the 103 vitamins and minerals our body needs. And it is it has the most magnesium of any food or like anything you can consume. Like nothing you can consume has more magnesium, like natural wow. occurring magnesium. Yeah. I don't know how this turned into. An yeah, that's, that was a great end off. Did too. you uh, fuck my wife? You want to know you want to know what I use as lubricant? CMOS, CMOS. Yep. And you know what? You're going in clean and hairless because <laughs> of a manscaped yeah. four, lawnmower 4.0. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see, guys. We're going to start doing real ads yeah. now. Folks. Oh, fuck. We still got to do the ads. I know. Uh, we'll do that after. Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Appreciate guys. It. We'll see you next week. See Go you next fuck week. yourselves. Go fuck yourselves.